Explosive New Evidence, The Real Russian Collusion. Obama Admin Colluded with Russia. Well, it turns out we should have listened to Democrats. There really was a Russian collusion, it just didn't involve Trump. Democrats have been playing the blame game for months now, but now the real Russian collusion and the facts are coming out. It wasn't about Trump. Surprise. 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 Of course, we've been saying this for some time now. It turns out the real Russian collusion was all about Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration. It was all about bribery, kickbacks, extortion, money laundering. It was all about the money. What a surprise! Hillary and kickbacks. Not. The Russians tampered with our nuclear industry. Thanks to Hillary Clinton and Obama. For two years they all knew about this corruption and did nothing. Attorney General Eric Holder knew about the kickbacks, bribery and extortion, and still allowed the deal to go through. Rod Rosenstein. Andrew McCabe. And Robert Mueller. They all knew about this. Why did they still allow this deal go through? Were they all getting kickbacks? Did they all sell out America and put our national security at risk for the sake of money? For 15 months the FBI knew there were bribes and kickbacks. And nothing? Come on man! Fifteen months before the 13 members of the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, known as CFIUS, approved the sale of the Canadian company Uranium-1 to Russia's nuclear arm giant Rosatom, the FBI began investigating persons who were connected to the Russian state corporation. The FBI said in court documents and in interviews conducted by Circuit that by 2010 they had gathered enough evidence to prove that Rosatom connected officials were engaged in a global bribery schedule that included kickbacks and money laundering. FBI officials said the investigation could have prevented the sale of Uranium-1, who controlled 20% of U.S. uranium supply under U.S. law. The deal which required approval by CFIUS an interagency committee who reviews transactions that leads to a change of control of a U.S. business to a foreign person or entity that may have an impact on the national security of the United States. At the time of the Uranium One deal the panel was chaired by then-Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner and included then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and then-Attorney General Eric Holder. By the time the CFIUS approved the sale of uranium-1 to Rosatom the FBI's investigation included substantial evidence against a Russian national, Vadim Mikran, who was then a top official with Rosatom's 10X subsidiary, according to court documents. The FBI said while at 10X, which was located in Maryland, Mikran was involved in multiple bribery and kickback schemes. In an affidavit, FBI officials said Mikran, with the consent of higher-level officials at 10X and Rosatom, both Russian state-owned entities, would offer no-bid contracts to U.S. businesses in exchange for kickbacks in the form of money. Made to offshore accounts, according to a 2015 affidavit in support of a search warrant. Migrant pled guilty to the allegations. Affidavit in support of an application under Rule 41 for a warrant to search. The Justice Department didn't move forward an indictment with prosecution of bribery by people tied to Rosatom, through subsidies and other entities, until 2014 after CFIUS approved the sale of Uranium-1, leaving the American public without knowledge Russian companies allegedly illegal actives as it went to procure one-fifth of U.S. uranium supply. In August 2015, Migran pled guilty to money laundering conspiracy involving violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, according to a Department of Justice press release. By the end of 2015, four defendants were indicted in the years-long investigation, according to court records and a Justice Department. United States of America v. Vadim Migran, Original Indictment Migran admitted that he conspired with Darren Condry. Boris Rubazevsky and others to transmit approximately $2,126,622 from Maryland and elsewhere in the United States to offshore shell company bank accounts located in Cyprus, Latvia and Switzerland with the intent to promote the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act violations, according to a DOJ press release announcing the charges against the then-defendants in 2014.
Mikran further admitted that the conspirators used consulting agreements and code words to disguise the corrupt payments. Condry was an executive of an American trucking company, Transportation Logistics International TLI, based in Fulton, Maryland, which was authorized at the time to move Russian uranium around the United States, according to contracts and documents reviewed by Circa. Condry pled guilty in June 2015 to conspiring to violate the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act (FCPA) and conspiring to commit wire fraud. Rubazevsky, a Russian national who was the president of NextGen Security in New Jersey, worked as a consultant for Migran and Tenam, according to court documents. He aided in the scheme to get the contracts awarded to TLI, according to the Justice Department. Rubazevsky pled guilty to conspiracy to commit money laundering in June 2015. A Russian state-owned enterprise responsible for selling Russian nuclear materials, contracted with a U.S. public relations expert in 2009 to provide public relations and marketing consulting services to 10X in the United States, states a court warrant. The contractor approached the FBI and received authorization to participate in the scheme. Victoria Tonsing a lawyer for the FBI informant, said her client is not only afraid of the Russian people, but he is afraid of the U.S. government because of the threats the Obama administration made against him. Tonsing said, my client was providing information for a couple years before this really got voted on by CFIUS, and here's the rub. High-ranking law enforcement officials in the Obama administration knew that there was corruption in this company and that information about the corruption in this Russian entity never made it to CFIUS, evidently, because CFIUS authorized the purchase in 2010. According to a 2010 press release from 10X, a Rose Tom subsidy, the company had signed 10 long-term enriched uranium product supply contracts with 8 U.S. utilities exceeding $4.3 billion and is aiming to expand its operations in the USA and beyond. By late October 2010, Technexport, 10X, opened its first subsidiary in the United States, known as Tenom Corporation, which was a part of the Russian state nuclear arm Rosatom, according to press releases and documents. One of the points of contention for people investigating the Clintons' connections with Russia and the Uranium One deal was a $500,000 payment given to Bill Clinton by the Russian bank Renaissance Capital for a speech he gave in Moscow in June 2010. Analysts at Renaissance Capital, who paid the Bill Clinton for the speech, spoke highly of Uranium One stock saying in July 2010 research report that it was the best play in the Uranium markets. The speech by Bill Clinton and the 2010 research report by Renaissance Capital happened while CFIUS, of which Hillary Clinton was a sitting member, was looking at the Uranium One sale to Rosatom. A spokesperson for Hillary Clinton did not return calls seeking comment and no evidence has been presented the speech payment made to Bill Clinton had any connection to the passage of a deal. Officials at Renaissance Capital could not be reached immediately for comment. At the time of the investigation did any of the U.S. law enforcement, intelligence or other agencies involved in the case inform the CFIUS board of the ongoing investigation? If not, why not? If they were informed, why did they make the decision they did to approve the Uranium One transaction? Did the president, himself, know? 1A. U.S. official who worked counterintelligence cases related to Russia told Circa. The bribery schemes included delivering thousands of dollars in yellow envelopes, laundering tens of thousands of dollars in briefcases or wiring thousands of dollars through shell companies through the Seychelles Islands, Latvia, Cyprus and Switzerland to name a few. The Russian collusion was real. It compromised American contractors in the nuclear industry. It involved kickbacks, extortion, and money laundering. It put our national security at risk. And yet, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Eric Holder, Rod Rosenstein, Andrew McCabe, they all knew about the corruption and did nothing about it. In fact, the Obama administration and the Clintons have defended their actions. They have insisted over and over again there was no evidence or that they even engaged in any wrongdoing. They insisted that there weren't any Russians or donors engaged in wrongdoing and there was no national security reason for any member of the committee to oppose the Uranium One deal. 
Now comes another real problem. How can the very same men that were involved in the real Russian collusion continue to be involved in the current witch hunt or investigation of a Trump-Russian investigation? Shouldn't these two men resign? Shouldn't Rod Rosenstein and Robert Mueller resign immediately? Maybe Hillary should write a new book and tilted what really happened. In fact if she finally came out with the truth dot I guarantee she'd sell a lot more books. Of course, after all the lies, I don't know if Americans would believe her. Total insanity.